Now, since the election of Pope Francis in 2013, parts of the traditional practice of the church, if not her teaching, seem to be up for discussion, from the traditional understanding of marriage to who should be received into holy orders. Is the church's role as defender and protector of the deposit of faith shifting? For answers, I'm delighted to be joined here in Washington by the former head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and author of the new book, Roman Encounters, The Unity of the Faith and the Holy See's Responsibility for the Universal Church. Please welcome Cardinal Gerhard Mueller back to the program, Your Eminence. Great to see you again. Thank you for coming in. Now, Your Eminence, I began and we've been reporting on this Amazon Synod for weeks now. Now, before this Synod began, you said Jesus had been driven out of the Synod and that the error was in the working document. This is what you said, a document that does not talk about revelation, about the incarnate word, about redemption, about the cross, about resurrection, about eternal life, but instead raised up in place of divine revelation to be accepted as such the religious traditions of indigenous people and their visions of the cosmos. Have you changed your mind since watching this synod unfold? No, it's not possible to change the mind. But this is also uh, clear that we, before and during and after the synod, we must uh, speak about Jesus Christ. No? Mm -hmm. um, St. Peter, Simon Peter, was instituted from uh, Jesus Christ himself, mm -hmm. and all six, his uh, successors have to um, proclaim mm -hmm. the gospel. You are Christ, the Son of the living God, and this truth contains mm -hmm. all the other truth of our uh, Christian creed. And do you feel that the vis that vision, the church's mm -hmm. understanding of redemption, has that been hijacked with this synod in the name of these indigenous practices and cultures and ecology? Yes, there was a certain veneration or adoration of uh, idols, uh, wooden idols, uh, and this absolutely uh, against the first commandment, mm -hmm. uh, only to adore God only mm -hmm. himself and Jesus Christ is the only savior, is present in the sacraments and not in idols or uh, we have the, the images of the saints, but we don't uh, adore. Right, we don't uh, adore. Not, not adoration is mm -hmm. on the veneration of this uh, people full of grace, of the grace of God. We praise the, the grace of the God in these persons mm -hmm. and the images of the saints are only uh, representative of mm -hmm. these uh, persons, but as, as such as, as are not uh, venerated and mm -hmm. in no way is a possible adoration uh, to human beings, to creation. Right. Because St. Paul um, distinguished no? mm -hmm. what is paganism yeah. Um, the confusion about uh, the, the creator mm -hmm. is only to be adored and the creation is made by the hand mm -hmm. of God. It's, it serves only for us, but it's no point of uh, adoration. Your Eminence, there are reports <coughs> that this final document from the Synod is going to include a recommendation to the Holy Father that older married men be ordained to the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And there may even be, may, a suggestion that females should be moved into the holy orders of the diaconate. Your mm. reaction to that you know, According to the Catholic doctrine, it's not possible because we believe in one sacrament of order in the three degrees, bishop, priest, and deacon. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we take serious uh, the, the doctrine of the church in the tradition of the church and the magisterium, it's not possible. Um, to um, ordain women in the sacrament of order and all the three uh, decrees. Mm -hmm. And about this uh, married uh, priest, this is only spoken about the veri probati, but also the um, priests in the celibacy are, are worthy persons. You must have a vocation mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ. It's not only a, a management mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of, um, of social um, order or, 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 or exist no needs, uh, but mm -hmm. um, Jesus Christ himself uh, made the vocation to the 12 apostles, and this is a model uh, mm -hmm. for us. And he, he said, um, uh, Ask the Lord uh, to pray for good uh, shepherds. Mm. In your book, Roman Encounters, you say the idea of female ordination is really prohibited. John Paul II mm -hmm. in 1994 already mm -hmm. taught that this is not possible in the church. Mm. Yet Bishop Erwin Crothler, who's become a very 
outsized figure over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. He says John Paul's teaching is not dogmatic. You would say what? Surely it's dogmatic. I think uh, some people don't understand what is a, a dogma. Mm -hmm. A dogma is not only a formal uh, declaration of the magisterium, but is also uh, the doctrine of the church according um, to mm -hmm. the truth of the revelation and so much mysteries of our Christian faith are not dogmatized in a formal mm -hmm. uh, sense. No? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> was it, um, the congregation of the doctrine of the faith in the times of Cardinal Ratzinger is that this document of the Pope is an infallible mm. uh, document. No? Uh -huh. So that is it, 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 not depends of a, a meaning of a certain bishop or theologian to to decide what is mm -hmm. the, the importance of a document of the magisterium, but the magisterium itself decided mm -hmm. with the um, allowance of, the, of Pope uh, John Paul II and, and confirmation of the Paul, uh, John Paul II that this document of himself is mm -hmm. an infallible declaration. In an interview, you said if you watch this Amazon Synod, and here's the quote, you said, if, if one listens to the voices of some of the protagonists of this assembly, mm -hmm. one understands easily that the agenda is entirely European. How mm -hmm. so? You know, the agenda is about uh, with the probati, uh, with ordaining, priests, women. Or ordaining uh, women has nothing to do with the needs and the situation of the Christian, of the Catholics in the, in the Amazon uh, region. Mm -hmm. no. and, uh, and and you feel mm. the main players here and promoters are yes, coming from your uh, native uh, Germany? Yes, native or Austria, uh -huh. but in the center yes. of, of Europe, no? and, uh, and the, all the money for the synod is coming from mm -hmm. uh, Germany, and the main protag protagonists are not people mm -hmm. of this region, but of uh, European uh, origin. And one of these bishops said, I never, in the, during 40 years, never baptized um, right. one of these uh, people. Indigenous person. As that is a, a direct offense against Jesus Christ in the baptism. has nothing to do with, with colonialism, mm -hmm. but with, with the mission. Jesus Christ is baptizing, is giving the grace mm -hmm. of uh, childhood of, of God, that we become children of God mm -hmm. in the sacrament of uh, baptism. And if a bishop, uh, a successor of the apostle, is saying we don't need the baptism, it's absolutely a contradiction to mm -hmm. Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ sent the apostle and all the successors mm -hmm. to all the world to baptize all people, all the believers, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And this is an, uh, an, an example for the anti-inculturation, but everybody has mm -hmm. the right to listen to the word of God and to become um, um, healed and uh, get the salvation in the faith and in the sacraments. Mm -hmm. Your Eminence, in your book, uh, you wrestle with this, and it, it, it is purportedly what this synod is about, evangelization of peoples of the various regions of the world. And in your book, Roman Encounters, you write, the fact of God's work of redemption will not fail, does not depend on worldly factors and power constellations, but rather on his promise that the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church. Christ's promise refers to the stability of his commission, even with a sinful priest, it is still Christ who baptizes. Yeah. And with a bad pope, it is Christ who teaches infallibility through him when it comes to the definitive interpretation of the revelation that God has entrusted to his church. Uh, when you look at the church today, what would you recommend to your brother bishops and cardinals? What are they not doing now? Christ, the church is Christ-centered. Christ is the head of his body, and the body is the church. Mm -hmm. no? and not on the contrary. Um, a bishop has to speak about Jesus Christ, proclaim the gospel to every body, and not to present his own opinions. I am not interested in the opinion of uh, mm -hmm. a person in, in, in every country, country, 
Uh, I don't think that um, our episcopacy is uh, super intelligent and that all the world depends of the personal intelligence of some uh, bishops in the world. Mm -hmm. What they have to do is to present the gospel. This is the word of God. Mm -hmm. The word of God is responsible. It gives us the salvation and the com complete communion with uh, Jesus Christ. And the church must return to a Christ-centered uh, community. Mm -hmm. And all the Eucharists, Christ himself is present in the Amazon and in the Tiber mm -hmm. and in all the regions of the world in Siberia, mm -hmm. uh, there doesn't exist the peripheries and the center. Rome is not the center of the Catholic Church. The center of the Catholic Church is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In Rome is very important, the Church of Rome and the Pope as a principle or the visible unity of the Church, but in the face, in the, in the face and the revealed face and in the sacraments mm -hmm. and it's the one pastoral to lead the people to the eternal life. Mm -hmm. That is the importance of Rome. What in this moment <coughs> of confusion, and you have written about this, you've spoken about this mm -hmm. for years, about the confusion coming out of Rome, the confused doctrine in certain dioceses in the world. What is the role of the laity? I mean, I, as I told Robert Royal earlier, when I saw those lay people taking those idols out of the church and throwing them into the Tiber, while, you know, I'm not going to weigh in on whether it was a criminal act or not, it shows the laity engaged enough to do mm -hmm. something, even something radical, mm -hmm. in the face of what they see as confusion and maybe paganism. What is that's the role? A, that's of a great mistake was to bring the idols into the church, not to put them out, no? Mm. Because uh, according to the law of God Himself, it's the first commandment, um, idolism is a grave sin, mm -hmm. and not to mix them with the Christian liturgy. Uh, and this can, to put it out, throw it out, can be against human law, but to bring the idols into the church was a grave sin, was a crime against the divine law. So that's a deep difference. No? Mm -hmm. And therefore it's uh, worse to bring those that have been uh, to brought the, into the church, not so that to take those them those out. took them out. Mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what should be the posture of the lady? Yeah. Should they get more engaged? Should they let their yeah. pastors yeah. know, we're confused, we need answers mm. here, or this yeah. isn't we, right? We, we have, especially in, in the United States, uh, a very strong uh, Catholic laity, uh, a good number of Catholic intellectuals in, among the priests, but also among the laity, and they must engage themselves and uh, the not uh, to uh, be the anxious uh, and uh, to be become loud, to have no um, anxiety um, mm -hmm. of Rome or of, of other uh, political reasons. Mm -hmm. um, uh, John Henry Newman canonized uh, uh, some days ago. He wrote a big paper about the importance of the laity mm -hmm. in the church, and he gave the big example after the Council of, of Nicaea, no? yes, Nicaea. Nicaea. Um, there was the laity who continued with the true faith against mm -hmm. the uh, plenty of bishops who were suppressed by the, the emperors mm -hmm. and the political reasons. Mm -hmm. say, where they got bit, where they yeah. being, no? And it was the laity and, and who and stabilized was a laity, no? Because yeah. everybody has in the Holy Spirit as a responsibility for the truth. Mm. No? I've got to get to two quick questions before I let you go. <clears throat> One, during a flight back from Mozambique, the Holy Father was asked about you. I'm going to read this. Uh, he was asked by a German news site what he thought of your recurrent interventions about concerns of the directions of the church. And he said, quote, he has good intentions. He's a good man, but he's like a child. What did mm. you make of those comments? Well, it's good to be a ch child of God, <laughs> because if you are not, if you not become children of God, we cannot enter the the heaven. The we cannot come to the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. huh? But on the other side, uh, Jesus said, um, "Don't say to nobody, you are good, because good is only God, no? and all goodness is coming uh -huh. from God, and we are thanksgiving mm. for the goods we have received uh, by God, but we are not instead of God." No? Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, we'll uh, leave it there. My, my I think you're a good man, too, <laughs> by the way, and I wouldn't call you a child. If, if you're a child, I'm mm -hmm. still in diapers. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. the man, I want to talk about your film uh, mm -hmm. th called The Manifesto mm -hmm. of Faith. It released online October 1st. What prompted you to be a part of this? I know they took your writings. You had written this Manifesto of Faith, which you released earlier mm -hmm. this year. Uh, what do you make of this film version of your words, your ideas, and, and really your reaffirmation of the faith? Well, it was a good idea to make into the film. No? We are living in this time of mm -hmm. uh, visuality, mm -hmm. um, and not only of, of the word. I am come from the old school. Yes. I'm an old <laughs> professor, <laughs> right. professor of writing books and so. Yeah. But we are living in this uh, modern world, and it's good to live in the modern world. It's another form mm -hmm. uh, of communication, but more possibilities mm. uh, of communication, another form. But uh, the young people are um, attached of these uh, forms. No? Yes, well, it's it was a very, very, very good resonance, very good echo. Mm -hmm. Uh, and everybody heard it, no? and, and when I was now on the street yes. <laughs> in New York on, and in, uh, in, uh, in Washington and other places in the United States, people recognized me directly Fr the, the, through the, that for, wow. for the film and other things, all the, all the mm. e e EWTN interviews well. and books. No? Yes. Is, uh, and now and, Roman and Encounters. A, and this, this morning, a young man uh, asked me, uh, what is the Holy Father said with Calvary? Um, oh. <laughs> Jesus is uh, not of a divine nature, mm -hmm. and and he asked me all these uh, questions, uh, uh -huh. and I gave him the right answers. Ah, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Your <laughs> Thank Eminence. You Thank you for being here. The book Roman Encounters: The Unity of the Faith and the Holy See's Responsibility for the Universal Church by Cardinal Gerhard Müller is available at EWTN's religious catalog and online everywhere.